If you like what I do, click like and subscribe. That really helps the channel a lot. I also wanted to take a moment and thank all of my patrons because they're the ones who keep this channel going and growing. And uh, if you want to support me that way, I will post a link in the video description for my Patreon, which you can just give a dollar a month to help out the channel. And it goes a long way to help me out. Thank you guys very much. Welcome to the Twisted Tentacle Inn. I'm your innkeeper. And today we'll be talking about Beacon of Hope. Beacon of Hope is a third level spell and it's castable only by Cleric. It takes one action to cast and uses verbal and somatic components. It lasts for one minute, which does require concentration, and it has a 30 foot range. This spell is a healer's dream. If you're building a Cleric for support and healing, this spell is actually really amazing. Let's go ahead and break it down uh, and go over everything that it does. First, uh, the 30 foot range looks pretty lame on paper. But that range only affects the initial casting of a spell. So an ally that you want to affect has to be within 30 feet when you first cast it. But once the spell has been cast and you're concentrating on it, allies can go beyond that 30 feet. They can be 200 feet. They could be a mile away and still gain the benefits of the spell. So that's actually kind of deceptive that it shows 30 foot range because it actually goes much farther than that. So what it does is that every ally that you cast this on is going to have advantage on wisdom saving throws. For frontline characters, this is actually really good because wisdom saves are their biggest bane. Fear effects, slow paralysis, and many other debilitating effects like that require wisdom saving throws. And generally frontline characters are not good at wisdom saving throws. In fact, they're pretty bad at them. Advantage can really go a long way to increasing their success rate. And the best part is that the wisdom save boost isn't just limited to spells, it's any type of wisdom save, including creature abilities that require those kinds of saving throws. Everyone who's affected by the spell also has advantage on death saving throws. I really don't need to tell you how important this can be when you actually need it. Now, realistically, how many times do you make death saving throws? Any individual character may make a death saving throw once every few sessions, but when you do need to make your death saving throws, if this is on you, that's going to be a very big lifesaver because having advantage on those is probably going to make sure that you stay alive and you don't have to roll up a brand new character. And then this, this spell also gives you one additional benefit, and that is that any healing, any healing that is done during the duration of the spell is actually maximized. So if you have to roll a die to heal, that, rye, that die is treated as if you rolled the highest value. And this could be healing from any source. It doesn't have to be from spells. And it doesn't have to be from a healing source caused by the initial caster of the spell. So something like a fighter's second wind is affected. If, if the fighter was within the spell's range when it was cast and the second wind, they immediately roll that, that die at the maximum value, which I think is a d10. So they would have rolled a 10. That's pretty big. And it also affects things like healing potions and healer's kits. I mean, all of them are treated as if you rolled the maximum value. That means that... Every healing is essentially affected by more than 50%. Some people may not think that's that good, but let's say you, you cast a third level Cure Wounds. Normally a third level Cure Wounds is going to heal 3d8 hit points plus your ability score modifier, which is probably going to be a plus four at this level. On average, that's going to be 18 points with a third level spell slot. But if you have Beacon of Hope active, you can use a second level spell slot, a whole spell slot lower, and still heal more than that. You, you would heal 20 points with a second level Cure Wound spell. So that just saved you a very valuable third level spell slot by having Beacon of Hope uh, used in this way. And if multiple party members do some kind of healing while you have this active, it can save you a lot of spell slots. I find healing spells generally to be pretty unimpressive in combat, and I think that most healing works better after a battle, but there are times where you have no choice. You have to heal a party member or they're going to go down, or they go down and you have to heal them, right? So having the ability to heal at the maximum value is something that can be extremely invaluable. In fact, I would go so far as to say that this spell takes 
healing a long way towards being something that's actually pretty efficient in combat and viable in combat. It also makes healing abilities on other classes even better. So that's actually something that you're benefiting your entire party with. If you're healing in combat, this spell is pretty much a must have because without it, I think most healing spells are just not gonna be all that good. Even better, once the combat is over, this spell can save you tons of spell slots or healing potions. Uh, if you don't have a time for a short rest, let's say, cast Beacon of Hope after the combat and have everybody, everybody heal and you'll be healing at the maximum value, which can potentially save you quite a bit of resources in the process. Because it takes your concentration, this spell is gonna compete with a lot of other great spells. So I recommend that if your character is trying to do combat and a few other things, this is probably not gonna be the spell for you. But if your character is gonna specialize in healing and support, then this is probably a spell that you'd wanna highly consider as the one that you're gonna be using your concentration on in a lot of combats. So definitely better for support, buffing, or defensive-minded characters rather than characters who are kind of a mix bag or dealing mostly with combat or control or something like that. And that does it for this quick look at the spell Beacon of Hope. I hope that this spell was helpful for you. And if it was, please consider clicking the like button or subscribing to the channel. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down there. in the comments down below. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on the spell Beacon of Hope. Are there some uses that I miss on this spell? Some combos that maybe the spell can work with that, that I didn't mention? Or maybe the spell is worse than I'm making it out to be and you want to counteract my points. I'd love to hear about it either way. Thank you guys very much. As always, I'm your innkeeper from the Twisted Tentacle Inn. Check in anytime. I'll talk with you then. Mm -hmm.